while Spotify shares are shooting higher in overtime despite a miss on the top and bottom lines, let's bring in Evercore ISI, head of internet research, Mark Mahaney. Uh, the margins here look good. Mark, tell me what you think. I'm particularly interested in the impact of the strong dollar on this company and the significance of this subscriber beat. Well, the six subscriber beat was uh, was nice. It was solid. It was somewhat modest, though. I, John, I think the real uh, outlier here and why the stock's up 7% is we just got record high gross margins. And the guidance, it's 31%. This is a low gross margin business to begin with. But 31% gross margins, that's a record high. And the guidance implies that it's sustainable, i.e., the next quarter's uh, gross margin guidance is kind of roughly in line with this quarter. Like, that's been the overhang issue on Spotify shares since their secondary, since their offerings, since their... Um, since they're listing, uh, you know, what did I say, five years ago, uh, the, the business doubled in revenue, but gross margins never moved. The stock didn't work. Then when the gross margins moved, the stock worked. You got more evidence of it today. So I, I, we continue to like the stock. So is this a, a cost-cutting story? They, they've done that to this point. Margins uh, certainly had upside. But I, I'm curious about the overall growth story here. Is this a, an audio Netflix or do they face some of the same challenges that all of the you know, content subscription names that aren't Netflix uh, are facing, but on the audio side? It's, it's a very different pitch than, than Netflix or a very different structural setup than Netflix. Netflix has got gross margins that are almost double what Spotify has because they create their own content. And there isn't this huge consolidation amongst the uh, you know, video content suppliers, there aren't three major video uh, libraries out there, good for all of us. In music, however, there are three major labels, and so that's why the gross margins are so much lower at Spotify. But over time, I think they've gotten slightly better terms from those labels, and they've been able to roll in more kind of advertising or promotion-type uh, revenues. Look, if you're an artist or a label and you want to break globally, the best, the biggest platform out there is Spotify, and these artists and labels are paying to get promoted on Spotify, and that's very high margin uh, contribution for Spotify. So I think that's that's really helped them too. And then maybe podcasting has really come through. Look how influential podcasts have become, you know, just in this country. And you know, the leading podcaster globally and in the U.S. is Spotify. I don't think they've monetized that podcasting platform well enough yet. So that's sort of the upside out there. But I'm very intrigued. It's been a very successful pivot for this company over the last couple of years. I give them a lot of credibility for that. That was exactly where I was going with you, Mark, was the podcasting business, because it does seem like a small collection uh, of several that have very, very large followings are really making all the money in the podcasting world and everybody else hasn't totally figured out how to crack the code and monetize. And I wonder if you think Spotify will be the company that does it. I, I think they will, but, um, you know, it's primarily the artists. There's a few of those podcasters that are making a huge amount of money because they're able to reach large audiences because people love their content. So they got these massive followings, Joe Rogan. Now, the advantage that Spotify has is the platform is big enough now. They've created a marketplace that's big enough. They no longer need to do these aggressive, exclusive distribution deals and pay out multi-million dollar contracts to get people on their podcasting platform. It's already established. So I, I still think this is a small part of Spotify's business, you know, single digit percent revenue contributor. But I, I'm intrigued by, you know, the power of podcasting now and the ability for Spotify to better monetize that over time. I want to find new growth areas for the company because, look, this is a stock that's gone hyperbolic over the last 12 months for good reasons. But if you want to buy it now, you need to have new greenfield opportunities. And I think podcasting is still one of those.